So this is an extra 2J block I have. It's got, it's got some unknown issues. I haven't opened it up, but I'm been collecting parts and just setting them on this motor. I went ahead and got the GTE valve covers, the GTE uh, coil pack covers, a forward facing. This is like a cheap Chinese forward facing manifold. I'm, I'm gonna have it welded to the lower plenum and then probably powder, co powder coat everything. I th I'm kind of thinking black. The, the manifold, the runners, even the valve covers, everything powder coated black and leave this, this original Toyota Teal. Um, that turbo, it's a GT35 ball bearing turbo with a T4 uh, exhaust flange. It's just kind of sitting there. I, I don't even have the um, the manifold yet for the exhaust side, but I'm collecting parts. At least I can do the standalone now in preparation for boost. <clears throat> all right, I've already done open up all the packages, but here we've got our um, ECU, black ECU. Actually, I think they like to call it EMU black engine management. This is the standalone ECU for the 2JZ. Um, this is pretty universal. Like this is the base um, of all the standalones you're gonna get. And then you can get the harness specific to your car. Um, so it's got a built-in map sensor. You run your vacuum, you know, slash boost hose to this port here. Of course, you've got your harnesses. It comes with plugs and pins to do your own harness. But I went ahead and got with the, went with the plug and play harness. Um, comes with a wideband O2 sensor. This is, you know, critical for your air fuel tuning. Comes with the wire to run from the ECU to your laptop. Pretty long, so I don't know. Some people put the ECU in the engine bay. If I don't think the harness is quite long enough to route it inside the car, so the ECU would probably be in the bay, but this looks like it'd be long enough to reach from the ECU inside to a laptop. Uh, about to find out here in a second. And I'm gonna have to uh, thread in this O2 sensor before I get tuning. So this is the ECU, pretty standard. This is what you can get pretty much with every kit. And then this is what's specific to the car. This is a plug and play harness for my car. It's um, kind of like a glorified jumper harness. It almost looks like a piggyback. You've got all your ECU inputs here from the, from the car side. All your factory connectors are gonna go here. It's got this really nice 3D printed block. And then it's got some jumper connectors that are gonna integrate back into the car because uh, you're gonna have a lot of outputs, you know, things for your, I don't know, speedo, tack, temperature, you know, gauges, different output signals are gonna have to go from the, um, back into the car. And then of course, you, this is your harness that is gonna plug into the standalone ECU. So this is like a jumper for the car harness, back into the car harness and then it wise off to your standalone ECU here. And then you should have two more connectors here, one for your wideband O2 sensor, and then also for your intake air temp. And they're all labeled super nice. IAT, intake air temp, Bosch. That's the brand of wideband sensor this came with. So all in all, you know, you can, I can't really consider this because it's just it's like jumping, it's wide off of what's already there. So you've got two main connectors and then two sensor connectors. And then the, the boost reference or vacuum hose, you gotta run to the ECU. In this case, I'm not quite boosted yet, but it still needs that signal to operate correctly. You still need that map reading. Uh, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the car up and find a good spot for this O2 sensor. And also the intake air temp, get, get it all plugged up, find a base file to upload into the ECU which there's plenty of files out there for this. Um, there's basically, it's like a startup tune, right? It's a starting point to, um, you know, before you start modifying and getting crazy and always save that so you can fall back to where you started in case you make a misadjustment. Um, anyways, let's get started. Okay, so up here, you've got your upstreams, the one that's closer up top and not this one, but the one up there, those are upstream sensors. You wanna leave those alone because those are gonna be adjusting fuel trims and um you know that was really a fair drivability if you start screwing with those but you can use your downstreams so i've got this one and then on this bank it's actually down here i think i'm going to go ahead and use this location for my wideband sensor um you know what no i'm going to use that because it's closer to the engine bay because i'm not sure how much length of harness i have to play with so i'm going to use i'm going to use this spot right here for my wide man.
All right, guys, I've got my wideband O2 sensor, throw it in. I've got the harness kind of dangling there. I'm going to go up from the top of the bay and uh, pull it tighter, tuck it, make sure it's not touching the exhaust or anything like that. And then go ahead and start installing the ECU. Find a good place to tuck that away. See if I can make it look as clean as I can, but we'll see what I come up with. So I've got it all hooked up like super temporary and just kind of like mocked up, I guess. But this is the jumper, right? So this plugs in to the factory ECU, which is in this little box here in the corner. And then you've got the inputs coming off the, the body, right? And then you've got your harness that goes to the ECU. I've got my vacuum hose teed off here to a vacuum source. I have got the wideband sensor going to the route right around the back along the firewall. Uh, where's that? Where's it at? Right there. The wideband sensor. Um, the IAT, it's really meant to, to weld a bung on to like, like for example, if you have like an aluminum pipe, it came with a pipe or a bung to weld on. And this is honestly more critical if you're boosted where intake air temps are more critical because, um, you know, hot air can lead to detonation if you have too much timing. Um, but like in this case, I'm literally just trying to start the car and see if it runs. If I can download a file into the ECU and just get this car to run. And I'll call that a major win. And then from there, I'm going to start organizing and cleaning up and tucking away, seeing how I can get all this to fit inside of the box, find a more permanent place to mount the ECU, start zip tying some wires out of the way and, and things like that. But for now, let me bust out the laptop, see if I can upload a file to the ECU and fire this thing up for the first time on a standalone and see what happens. Okay, so what I've done beforehand is I went to the website and downloaded essentially the base file, which is like gonna be somewhat of a factory tune, like a starting point, like I said. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this file up. And this is all live. Like I haven't done this before. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key, put the key in the ignition, turn it on, power up the ECU. Um, new device detected, please enter device name. All projects will save in the directory device name. Okay, so I gotta create a name. I'll put S300. Okay, that's gonna be the name of this device. So. Okay. I'm gonna go over to edit, no file, make permanent. This is gonna write this base map to the ECU. No way, it's, it's that easy, it's already done. I've got readings, KPA. Like I, I haven't really messed with any of this. So first things first, I guess, let's see if the car starts. Eh, a little rough. This is just a startup tune after all. Ooh, super rich. Super, super rich. I can smell it. Jesus. Okay, but it starts. We're off to a good start. My camera guy. Don't drop it because it'll shatter into a thousand pieces. All right, so it's like... Gotta do the cool cinematic. Yeah, man, get the clean shot. So, I don't really know the way to clean up this other than to <laughs> shove the cover back on and sandwich it down. <laughs> I mean, that sounds legit. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> even if it's Buzz that mofo down? No, not even like force it down. Even if there's a gap, like that looks more factory than, than just, just that. Just leaving it like that, you know? At yeah. least the cover will be on there. Yeah, I'm just gonna, even if it's just like that, chilling like that, that's better than nothing. What's the so far what I've come up with is putting the plug and play harness, tucking it away in the cover. Um, kind of get some extended bolts. So like I said, there's like a quarter inch gap around this lid. But honestly, from looking at it from up top and the sides, it looks, it looks pretty untouched. The gap on the side is super minimal. I mean, I'm not worried about that. So at least I got all that mess out of sight. 
Uh, somewhat got this little loop. I could organize that better later. I could probably get it up against the firewall. And the, the actual standalone, I'm gonna have to figure out a nice place to put this, but I do want it close to the firewall because this cable, as it is already, doesn't reach, uh, there's not too much extra length left to uh, go to the laptop. So, unless I run the USB through the firewall, but I don't know, I could worry, worry about that later. Um, let me show you some issues I ran into with the standalone. When I uploaded that base map, it didn't want to run and it smelled super rich. There's one, I was kind of looking through it. I'm like, man, what's going on? It smells like there's too much fuel. And I saw the injector table and it was adjusted for, and I want to say like 440 CC injectors. I'm like, that is not right. That's not what comes on these cars. So I, I did some researching factory injector CC is about 250. Um, so I went ahead, let's see here. I'm, I'm learning as, I, as I'm going, so I'm just going to be scrolling through general fuel. Uh, let's see, injector size. Here we go. So right here, it's like 440 cc. So I knocked it down to 250 cc, which is pretty much what stock is, and it runs beautifully. It fires up. It runs. It's nice and smooth. The target AFR is like all synced up. Um, let me go ahead and fire it up for you guys. Let's see here, use get data from EMU. Okay, yeah, so let me roll up this window because shop noises and try not to pitch my cord. Ah. Okay, so like I said, runs nice and smooth. And it makes live adjustments, which is neat. I can like make changes to the fueling table and it makes it on the fly. So let me show you here. I'm still getting the hang of the keys to do it quicker, but if I take away fuel, ooh, ooh, we'll come back. I took away too much. Yeah, it makes changes on the fly. Just by hitting a couple keys, I just almost made it die. So I can, right now I'm adding fuel to sync up my actual and target. Right now I'm adding fuel, adding this tar the target is starting to sync up, bam, good. So yeah, I hit some keys real quick to show you guys that I went too far. Car kind of stumbled and almost died. Um, so what I can do is do some driving around, data logging, fine tuning. But uh, honestly, that'd probably be another video. Right now, I'm just glad I got the harness and computer hooked up. Somewhat cleaned up. It's better than just throwing it in there for now. Um, I got the startup tune. It's able to run and drive. So from here, it's going to be fine tuning. You know what? Before I end this video, I want to play around with two step. I want to see, I want to find where that is, the launch control and two step and do an ignition cut and see what this 2J sounds like with the hard ignition cut rev limiter. Cause I, I just love the way that sounds, man. It sounds so nasty. All right, I've, uh, I'm having trouble getting the launch control to activate. I'm pretty sure with launch control, I can get some more aggressive, uh, like hard cut uh, tunability tunability but right now I'm, I'm able to play with like the actual rev limiter and uh i've got it set to cut spark i've got some ignition retard i've got it at 4000 rpms it sounds pretty aggressive <laughs> yeah it still sounds pretty neat man um but like i said the launch control this is all a learning experience i'm i've messed with uh hondas you know hp tuners things like that this it's a learning experience here launch control you have your you know speed cut rpm or, or speed based rpm based but then the trigger i need to learn how to activate the trigger for the launch control so it's got different pins i need to figure out which pin i would imagine if it's mile power mile per hour activated it should just activate if you're not moving that's oh let me do zero none None, none. Minimum. Let me just do 2,000 just to see if this actually works. No, it's not active. Yeah, launch control still isn't active. Usually in the past, like with Hondas and stuff, I could just do speed base, spark cut, or you know, the RPM. And uh, it's as easy as that, but for some reason, this one I can't get it to activate. 
Hmm. Anyways, I'll, that'll be another video. Let me uh, play with this, learn it some more, get more familiar. Uh, and we're that much closer to boosting this 2JZ, man. I'm super excited.